everyone. Today we are doing a full face first impression slash full face of a single brand and it's going to be this Nub... How do you pronounce this brand? Nabla? Nabla? Tell me which one it is. I'm not too sure but I've heard a lot of good things about this brand. So I got sent heaps of stuff in one of my recent PR hauls and thought I would just chuck heaps of it on my face today. In a couple of hours I'm getting my nails down. Here's how they look for the before. Little flames. They're very grown out so I'm very excited to get them touched up. I'm going off in just over an hour so I'm going to do a quick full face of this brand and I'm going to come back later and show you guys how it wears throughout the day. So I'm not going to like sit around too much. I'll list everything I'm using down below and put the pricing and stuff. So first up I'm going to take concealer. So this is called the Close Up Concealer Stay Full Smooth. Yeah formula of product. The box is real cute. It's like in this little hexagon shape. So around my eyebrows I'm going to take the shade Cream Beige. This is how the actual like true looks. It kind of reminds me of like Tarte Shape Tape but it's still a bit different. But can you see what I mean? That's them next to each other. You get 10 mil in this shape tape and in this you get 4 mil. So it's quite a big difference but let's give it a go. So here's what the applicator looks like. I've got a lighter color too that I'll use under my eyes. I better just clip on my hair. I just washed my hair so it's like super fluffy. Apparently you can buy some hair clips like this from Shopo as well. Someone was saying in my photo comments on Instagram because heaps of people have been asking me where to get them but I just got them sent with makeup and like a PR parcel. Okay, this feels very liquidy. It's real easy to get a nice sharp line with the applicator. Just like that. Pretty good. Why does my hair look bright orange? I've not even dipped back into the tube to get more product and it's still going like... A little bit goes a really long way. All right, and now that that's done, I'm just going to blend it out with a flawless finish sponge by So Beauty. It's got a real nice finish. It's kind of drying down to like a satin, and it's blending out very, very nice. You can't even like see where my skin ends and begins. It's so good. The coverage seems pretty full as well. I can't wait to try it under my eyes. So yeah, heaps of you guys did say on my unboxing haul that you wanted to see a review on this brand. So hopefully this does come in helpful. That's looking really good. Let me just zoom you in so you can see like how seamless it is. Obviously it's darker than my natural skin tone. So... There's gonna be areas where it looks a bit of dodge, but it's carved out my eyebrows so nicely. And it's honestly so easy to blend. Like it's just going seamless. All right, well let's try the liquid foundation then. I'm impressed so far. I don't think there is a primer here, so I'm just gonna go straight in. I've already like moisturized and put serum on and everything. So my skin's feeling quite nice already. They sent me three shades, a light one and two medium ones. I think I'm gonna try on the two medium ones because I've got some fake tan on, so. This is how the packaging looks. It's the close-up futuristic foundation, soft focus, weightless, perfect complexion. You get 30 mil, which is just like your standard amount. The packaging is very like travel friendly. It's very lightweight. It's very slim. It's not like super pretty, but it's practical. And then the box just looks like this. Made in Italy, cruelty free and vegan. And you just squeeze it out. So it reminds me of like the Chanel Vilumiere. Is that what it used to be called? Vilumiere Aqua or something? I used to love it back in the day. Ooh, the consistency reminds me of it too. This could be good. So that shade there is called M40, medium 40. And then this one's M20, which I think is going to be better today. So I'm going to keep that other stripe on my face. Why not? Oh, you got to be careful of that squirty squirt. I'm just going to go all over. I don't really know how much I need. And then just <laughs> to balance it out, I'm going to do one stripe of the darker one. Just so that the colors are the same on both sides. Now I'm just going to take my sponge and... Dab it out, up and down. This reminds me of the Vilumia Aqua. Is that the one? The one that I used to be obsessed with? I'm sure it is. It definitely goes pretty far. Like, I don't think I'm going to need any more product. I'm just putting some down my neck. Even the smell smells familiar. So this foundation is a really nice coverage, like medium coverage, while it's still feeling so lightweight. Like, it doesn't feel heavy and thick on your skin. It just feels very, I don't know, like moisturizing and light. And my skin is looking flawless. I don't know why my camera looks orange today. What's going on? At least you can see all of, you know, the texture and everything on my face really nicely. Let's blend out this on my forehead. Maybe that'll make me look a bit better. I think the darker color is just a bit orange on me. But the medium 20, I think it was, that color seems to be really nice for me. Oh my gosh, I'm actually like pretty wrapped with that. I would definitely use this again if it wears nicely, which 
we will find out later. I'm gonna actually just use like all of Nebla Beauty today though. However I pronounce that brand. I don't know, someone please help me. Um, so I'm gonna use their concealer, setting powder, blah, blah, blah. But we'll see how all those products combined wear throughout the day anyway. This is something I could definitely imagine myself traveling with because like I said, it's very compact. And honestly, that looks stunning and that's no primer. So that so far is definitely a win from me, so far. All right, now under my eyes, I'm gonna go in with Ivory, the concealer. It's a little bit lighter than the last shade I used, just to brighten, hopefully. So I'm just going to draw it on that inner corner. I always focus product like right here, because that's where I get super dark, and then just spread it out. A little bit of a triangle shape, and then back in with my sponge. The consistency of these products just feels really nice on the skin. Nothing feels too heavy. And I think the coverage of that is beautiful look. Like, that's really brightened up all of that purple I had without even using any type of corrector. It's really made a huge difference. Blends out flawlessly, doesn't look too pale. It looks just right. So definitely, I think, under the eyes. Ivory, if you're a similar skin tone to me. Ivory under the eyes with M20 in the foundation seems to be the goods. And I feel like the lighting's calmed down now and I don't look bright orange anymore. So there you go. You can see that I do not look fluoro because that was a bit worrying for a while there. I was like, is that what I look like? I'm actually feeling up my complexion right now. Like, tell me. Do you agree? I'll put a poll. How do you think this is looking? Flawless? Beautiful? Do you think it looks cakey? Or do you think it just looks meh? Like, I don't even think it looks cakey, but I'd love to see what you guys think because everyone's got different opinions on, like, what cakiness really looks like. For me, cakey looks, like, drier and real heavy. This, like, still looks heavy, but it looks flawless and, like... Fresh still? I don't know how to describe the difference, but I know there's a difference in my mind. It doesn't look crusty. It's not going like clunky and chunky in any certain spot. It's not gripping anywhere. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see the texture again. Sorry if this video is eight years long, but I'm just like wanting to be thorough right now. My earring, look how disgusting that looks. It's like bright red in the hole. Can I just conceal this? It looks sick. I don't like that. Okay, so for powder, we've got a couple of smoothing pressed powders, which are in this cool hexagon packaging as well. And we have a baking and setting powder, which looks like it's going to be loose. This is translucent. I'm actually just going to use this under my eyes. We'll see how it goes under that, like, fine skin, because I get a lot of fine lines under there. <clears throat> my voice is vanishing. Some powders hide it, like my bare mineral setting powders that I like to use under my eyes, like Well Rested Summer Bisque. And then other ones just make my under eyes look like a 80 year old's ball sack. And that's not really the look I want to go for. By the way, I hope you guys are loving the three uploads a week at the moment. I'm so proud of myself for getting back into it. I've just been traveling all year like you guys know. So it's so nice to be at home and able to actually like pump out some more content for you guys. And as always, I'm uploading vlogs as well. So make sure you check out my vlog channel if you haven't yet. The link is down below. So we're gonna take a small face brush. This is how it looks. It comes with a pink lid like this. I don't even know. Yep, you can see it. All right, there you go. So it's called the Close Up Baking and Setting Powder. Made in Italy. You get 30 grams in here. It's quite a big product. Decent amount of stuff in here. It looks nice and finely milled, so. Should we go? Should we go for it? I'm not gonna like bake per se. I'm just gonna like blend it in under there and just set. I feel like I didn't have to use much product and that does look really smooth. Let me show you the before and after. So obviously aside from the finish, cause this side's obviously gonna be a lot more matte, but I feel like it doesn't look disgusting. But this is the kind of thing I need to check later on because sometimes it happens throughout the day. You know, I first set it and it looks good and then after a few hours it starts wrinkling up, so. Straight off the bat, obviously you're always going to have a couple of wrinkles under there because it's literally just the shape of your eye. They kind of protrude out of your head a little bit and create little fine lines, but sometimes I get like full on wrinkles, so I will keep you updated throughout the day. Yeah, this feels really silky. I can't even feel like once it's on, I can't feel it there. It doesn't feel heavy or drying or anything. And while I'm applying it, it just feels silky. Like it feels really soft. All right, are they gonna put out something that I hate or not? Because I don't usually have first impressions go this well. I don't know how to act. <laughs> I wonder if they've got a setting powder like this in a more brightening formula, that would be amazing. Like a set and finish that just like brightened up under the eyes, like in a peachy shade or something, like a yellow shade. That's what I want in my life. Like my Bare Minerals Well Rested or Summer Bisque, but in this formula, cause that is even finer and less heavy than 
my bare minerals for sure. I literally feel like I've got nothing on, like all over my face. But let's see if this changes things. So this is the close up pressed powder, smoothing pressed powder. Be instantly flawless with the soft powder that provides the skin with a breathable, natural, did I say breathable? Breathable. Natural matte finish infused with sweet almond oil. Super fine texture, perfectly melts into the skin with an immediate smoothing effect that lasts all day long. Packaging's real cute. This is how it looks. I actually really like this. It's different to anything I've seen. It's like golden, pinky, rosy. So I'm gonna take my powder brush. I always get questions about what brush this is. It's EXO Beauty Powder Brush. It also comes with a black handle. This is the one from the vegan set. Both of them, they're the same. Like they made it out of the same stuff and they're the same size and everything. So I'm just going to tap this powder all over. You guys know how much I love my MAC Studio Fix powder. It's definitely much more powdery than my Studio Fix. Maybe I'm using too much. I'll just try dabbing in a little bit less. I'm not getting any streaks on my foundation. It looks good. They sent me all of these blushes and bronzers and stuff like that. And they also sent me like a little Z palette to put them in. But I think we're gonna use some of this for contouring and bronzing. So I think this one is like gonna be my bronzer shade. It's in Saint Tropez. And they come out of this little box into this little sleeve. It looks very tightly packed. And the size is not too big. Like, I mean, I don't go through products like this quickly anyway. Good for a makeup artist, I guess, or if you wanted to, like, build your own palette. I'm going to take a medium face brush and use some of this. Shade and Glow in Saint Tropez, or however you pronounce that freaking place. And I'm just going to massage that over my cheek area and temples. So it's a nice color. I was a bit worried it was going to be too dark, but... I think it looks good. Everything I'm putting on just like melts into my skin and looks so smooth. Like that would be, like if I could choose one word today <laughs> for these products so far is they all go on smooth. Nothing looks patchy, nothing looks heavy in places and light in other places. Like it just looks even and smooth. Even this bronzer is just like so smooth. It's just blending out like butter. And not butter that you get out of the fridge and you just rip up your toast, no. This is like butter that you've just got out of the cupboard and it blends in and melts into your toast so undetectably and evenly and satisfying. God, I hate that though. Like when you get butter and it's like rock hard and you're trying to spread it and it just destroys everything in its path. Anyway, I don't know if anyone's going to relate to that, but that's just one of my pet peeves of life. I feel flawless. Like I really do. So that's on my nose, temples, a little bit under my lip, cheeks. Now we're going to take another colour. This one right here is called Gotham. I like that name. I'm going to use the same brush because it's got a nice like slimmer tip. This is a more like contour shade I would say. I'm thinking. I hope. I hope it's dark enough for me. Yeah it will be. It's like a greyish colour so it just gives you that real nice shadow. It's not super noticeable. I'd usually go for something a bit darker but I like this. I think it looks good. Especially paired up with the bronzer. I'm just kind of building it up a little bit just to make it a bit more intense. But yeah it's like undetectable. You can barely see it. It really is like a true shadow shade. I have a couple of blushes here too but let's just do some eye makeup and brows and things and then we'll come back to that because I'm not too sure what color we want. So they've got brow pots and brow pencils. So I think today I'll try a pencil because I really don't need much product at all. And I feel like a brow pot is going to be more like a pomade which I think I would use more when I don't have such a fresh brow tint. I just got these done at Benefit recently. Let's try this. Ultra slim retractable brow pencil. Ultra fine retractable tip fills even the smallest gaps with precise hair like strokes. We've got Uranus and Mercury. I have no idea what color we need so I'm just going to open them up. So I'm going to go with the lighter one. I'm just going to wind it up and it has a spoolie on the other on the other end. I can't talk. I'm just brushing through my brows quickly. All right and now I'm just going to use small strokes and fill in the tail. Seems nice. Not too crazy creamy or pigmented. Just the right amount for the brows where I don't know it just looks nice. I draw it on my hand. Yeah, it's kind of like waxy-ish and buildable. You can see those strokes. And then if I press a bit harder, you get a bit more pigment. I like that. It's a bit more controllable, especially for the more natural look, like what I want today. Cause I don't want my eyebrows to look like big sharpie brows. I've grown out of that phase, guys. That was me when I first started my YouTube channel and I was like, wow, brows. And I just like put them on, on my face, like that thick. I think this color's good too. I used the shade Mercury. Honestly, I'm just waiting for it. I'm waiting for the product I hate. I'm waiting. There's gotta be one. There's gotta be. All right, they sent me like six or seven eyeshadow palettes. I've got four here, which I'm gonna show you quickly. So the first one is called Soul Blooming Eyeshadow Palette. And it's such cute packaging. And those are the colors on the inside, like kind of pastels. 
Next up we have Secret Palette and this is really cool packaging too with like the snakes on it and everything. My nose is really itchy, what's going on here? I promise I'm not picking my nose, it's just, yeah. Anyway, that's that one there. So you get some royal kind of tones, like you've got that royal blue, royal green, some golds and some reds. Like it's definitely very royal tone. That's what I would call it. Then we have Poison Garden, this cool packaging. I really like the packaging on all of these. They feel like good quality too. This one has neutrals, purple, blue, red, kind of similar to the last one in a little bit of a way. I don't know, maybe a little bit more every day. So that's this one here. And that one there is the secret. So secret and poison garden. Like I feel like they go together nicely, but they're still a little bit different. And then last but not least, the last one I'm gonna show you is called Dreamy. I'm not gonna use all these today. But this one's like a neutral, real pretty. Love that. I really wanna use this because it kind of matches my top today. <laughs> I'm gonna start with the shade Gia. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce it, G-E-A. And this is on a angled eye brush by XO Beauty. And that's got really nice pigmentation. I've really been sleeping on this brand. I apologize. Nabla, Nabla. I owe you one. Honestly. Beautiful. Love that color. Every single time I do my makeup in my room, I don't know why, it always looks patchier than what it does in real life. I think it's just all of my discoloration on my eyelids. But honestly, that blend was so easy and beautiful. So just trust me, that is good. That's real good. And this brush I'm using is just gonna be packing on like an intense amount because it is like a really firm, densely packed bristled brush. So it gives that really nice buffed out, opaque effect. Yeah, that color. Woo! Next up I'm gonna go in with the shade Bolero, which is this pinkier blush tone. And I'm gonna put that on at the inner half of my crease and just blend it down a little bit. These are like butter really like them. Let me know if you enjoy these one brand makeup tutorials and if you do what other ones would you like to see because I have not done these in a while. I think I did, was it Too Faced? My, I can't actually remember, it was that long ago. So I'm just taking my time to kind of add like another layer just to make sure everything looks nice and opaque. And I'm just bringing that pink onto that in a corner. I might do some kind of like halo-ish eye. Let me zoom you in a little bit so you can see a bit better. And I'm just darkening the Gia shade on the outer corner. And then I'm going to take my finger in to maybe Garden Gate. This one right here, it's like a blue and lilac kind of duochrome. And I'm just going to press that on it to the lid. It's real pretty. Just keeping everything nice and soft and blended because I don't know, I just like that. Like with this top I'm wearing, it's a very sweet, pretty top, you know? <laughs> so I just want my makeup to look nice and sweet and soft as well. No harsh lines. So yeah, so far, loving that. It's definitely more of like a top coat shimmer, I think. Like, you can obviously see it still, but I think it would look even more impressive if you put down like, I don't know, like this color right here and then put that one on top or something like that, I think. Oh, where's my voice gone? I think that would work better. Ugh. Sit to hold. <laughs> on the lower lash line, I'm gonna use the edge of my angled eye brush. This beautiful neutral. And there might be a little bit of the pink hair color mixed in. But that's fine. Just running that underneath. Um, and then I'm gonna take a bit of a honey drip, which is like a chunky, creamy, glittery shade. I was attempting to find a small brush when I'm a lazy bitch and don't wash any of my brushes. I've got this little one from the Luna Beauty Brush which is actually a clean, I'm pretty sure. Like nothing's coming off of my finger. <laughs> I think that's just like the color of the bristles. Maybe, I could be wrong. Anyways, just applying that on that inner corner. That is so pretty. Love that. That just looks like, I don't even know, molten metal liquid fire. You do have to kind of like pack it in there and buff it on. Cause it's quite like a creamy consistency almost. Like, I don't think it's like actually a cream eyeshadow. But I don't know, it's like chunky, so it just looks good if you buff it in there. And it looks so brightening, and I love it. Okay, I'm gonna wipe off that brush and go in with the shade Chamomile. And I'm going to just put that on my brow bone with a little bit of philosophy on top, which is like green and pink, so this could look terrible. I feel like you can barely see it. I think these shimmers work better on your finger. Oh, there you go. Second layer came through. It's actually quite fun. And then I'm gonna go back in with my angled eye brush and just 
go over the edge. Okay, for the um, mascara and liner, I'm actually going to do a different, not mascara, falsies and eyeliner. I'm going to do a different video testing out magnetic eye lashes. We're doing a does it work. So... I'm gonna finish off the eye makeup shortly. So let's do some blush and lipstick first. All right, I'm gonna go in with this blush. It's called Coralia. It's real pretty. It's got like a subtle, does it have like a sheen? I don't know. We'll be able to tell when I put it on, I think. So I'm just going to apply a small amount of this with my medium face brush. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm just using like one tap at a time because it's quite pigmented and you don't wanna go like balls deep and ruin everything. I'm not about ruining lives. Okay. There we go. I don't really know if they sent me like a highlighter, so I might just use an eyeshadow. I might just use this fabric eyeshadow from the Poison Garden palette on a detail face brush. And we're just going to run that over the cheekbone. I like my choice. This eyeshadow is so pigmented. We've got a nude eye pencil. We've got nude and light nude. I'm gonna go light nude. This is perfect because I need a new nude eyeliner because I lost like half of mine. And it's beautiful. Everything is just a dream to work with. I'm so shocked. Honestly, I, I, I'm just so shocked I haven't tried this yet. Wow. So far, nothing has been terrible at all. The lipstick patching is so cute. It's so luxe. This is how the tube looks. It's like rose goldy, pinky. So pretty. And this shade I'm using is called Backbeat. Yeah, it's like a matte. It feels quite like waxy almost. Like not in a bad way, just a little bit buildable. Very smooth and like it feels like kind of waxy on the lips, like not drying, not moisturizing, but somewhere in between. And it looks very smoothing. I'm gonna mix some at Chloe on top, which I think is a little bit more pinky. They do definitely feel a little bit heavy on the lips. They look really nice though, but I can like feel it. Out of everything I've put on my face today, that's the thing I can feel the most. But I love the color. It looks really pretty. All right, so I'm gonna go quickly do this magnetic eyeliner stuff and I'll be back to do the mascara and then that's pretty much everything done. I really like everything so far. Like honestly, I'm stoked. <laughs> I am having a bad mascara day. I mean mascara day, eyeliner day. <laughs> Holy crap, it just got out of hand. Anyways, so this mascara is called the Major Pleasure Mascara and it's in black and this is what the brush looks like. Nice bushy brush, not too massive. And let's try it. It's giving a lot of separation in length. It's super black. Okay, not the mascara's fault, but this side, because I got eyeliner on my lashes, it made my eyelashes go crunchy and I can like barely get the mascara on anymore. But I do like it. It's not my favorite mascara by any stretch of the imagination, but it does look really pretty for length and separation. I don't think it gives a lot of volume. I probably would normally go for a bit more volume, but you can see on my lower lashes, it looks really pretty. So I'd definitely use it again on like my lower lashes, but my top lashes, I'm like, eh, I'd probably want a bit more, you know? You could, of course, continue to layer it up. Um, which would look really nice as well, but because I'm wearing falsies, I'm gonna do that. It's 11 o'clock by the way, so we'll see how my makeup wears throughout the next like 10 or 11 hours. Hello, so for the makeup, you see the eyeliner's kind of peeling off, that's for the other video. It's only kind of come off, like the makeup, where I've got some oil on my face because I was eating a salad before and yeah, it removed the dark. Everywhere else, it stayed really nice and it hasn't gone like oily or cakey or anything like that. I've got a little bit of a natural shine coming through on my forehead, but it's not like terrible at all. By the way, it's eight o'clock. When did I start? Like 11. So it's like almost well, nine hours, almost 10 hours. I don't even know. I can't remember. Anyway, decent amount of time and I feel like it would keep going strong. I've definitely got a little bit of foundation right here that I obviously did not blend very well earlier. The eyeshadows are still there. The shimmer is definitely fading a little bit, but the mattes are still really good. The eyebrows are still good. Under my eyes, that have not really creased much at all. Considering how long I've had this on, like if I look up, like there's just really small lines around the natural contours of my eyes, but like there's no giant wrinkles down here like I sometimes get. So that is a very, very good sign. I'm definitely gonna keep trying out that powder because it was so smooth and so lightweight and it looks really pretty under there. And I think, especially if I use just a little bit of a corrector just in here, because I've got like one eye darker than the other, and then use that to set it, it would be amazing. Usually my Bare mineral stuff does add a little bit more coverage, so I don't usually like need color corrector, but I think with that powder, I would just need to do one extra step just to make sure that this like blue cast was covered. I'm impressed. The lipstick's obviously pretty much gone now. I haven't retouched it all day. The blush, bronze is still there. I feel like the contour could be a little bit darker, it would be a little bit better on me, just like one or two shades darker, but it's still 
looked really nice, especially for a more natural contour look. So overall, I'm pretty stoked. Like I'm pretty stoked with this brand. If you want to try it, I'll link them down below. Cannot believe, like I've never tried this before. Like honestly, I'm blown away by so many of those products. Around my eyebrows, like the concealer looks so good as well. Like everything just looked good. Let me know if you've tried this brand. Let me know what you thought down below. And I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye.